Okay, I'm just going to warn you, I'm going pretty fast on this video, so you may have to hit the pause button. Anyway, we're talking about functions and uh, the definition of a function. Uh, for every element in the first set, x, there's only one element in the second set, y. The key is you only have one y for every x. The domain is all the x values, and the range is all the y values. And there's many ways to, to define functions. Um, the first, uh, here's, here's a table. Is this a function? The answer is, yes, it is, because for every x there's only one y, isn't there? The domain would be the numbers uh, in the first column, and the range would be the numbers in the second column. Okay? How about if we take the same exact table and switch x and y? Now is it a function? Notice you've got 5 that's assigned 0 and 5 that's assigned 3, so the answer is no, it's not. You could still talk about the domain and range. The, the domain is all, all the numbers in the first column. The range is all the numbers in the second column. How about this last one? Is this a function? Would you call this a function over here? Is it true for every x there's only one y? The answer is yes. And the domain would be the numbers in the first column. The range is just the number 3, but it, it would be considered a function. One of the things in this section that's important is getting used to the f idea of function notation. Uh, whenever you have, in this case, we have an equation that defines a function. Instead of uh, writing y, a lot of times we'll write f of x instead of y. And the reason why we do that is it's, it's just a convenient way to evalu evaluate no numbers. For example, suppose we want to evaluate uh, this function when x equals negative 2. If you're going to plug in negative 2 in for x here, why not just plug it in for here for x also? And then what this says is f of negative 2 is the value of y when x is, is negative 2. So f of negative 2 equals 9. It's much easier to, to, to say f of negative 2 than it is to say the value of y when x equals negative 2. So it's kind of an abbreviation, isn't it? So here's another example. If you wanted to find f of 3, again, we're still talking about the same function right here, f of x equals x squared plus 5. Remember what that means? That's the value of y when x equals 3. You just plug it in. Every, everywhere there is an x, you plug in 3, and you plug a 3 in here also. So f of 3 equals 14. 9 plus 5 is 14. While we're at it, we could, we could ask a question, what's the domain of this function? What, what's the domain of this function, or this one? What values of x can you plug into this equation and get a y? The answer is all x, so the domain will be all the numbers. Let's keep on going. Now, here's another function. You don't, you don't always have to use f of x. You could use g of x or g of t. You don't even have to use x all the time. It's important that you understand what the notation says, though. Think, think of it like this. This is the key to understanding function notation. Whatever you want to find the value of y for, you plug it in here and here for this function. So if you want to find g of 3, you plug in 3 and for x here and here, and you get 1 fourth. If you want to find, well, let's look at, look, look at the difference between the, these two. Look at the difference between g of 2x and 2 times g of x. g of 2x, you just plug in 2x everywhere there's an x, and so you end up with 2x minus 2 over 2x plus 1. But 2 times g of x, you're taking the whole function, you're just multiplying it by 2. So when you multiply the numerator by 2, you get this. All right, let's keep on going. Look at the difference between these two for the same function. This says you're plugging in 1 over x in for x and computing the uh, y value. So you end up with this. You plug in 1 over x for x here and here. You get the common denominator on the numerator. You get this. Then when you flip over the bottom and multiply, x is cancel, so you get 1 minus 2x over 1 plus x. This one's actually easier. This is just 1 over the whole function. So it's 1 over g of x. It's 1 over x minus 2 over x plus 1. When you flip over the bottom one, you just get x plus 1 over x minus 2. Look at the difference between g of negative x, which means you're plugging in negative x for x here and here. So you get negative x minus 2 over 1 minus x. This just says you're multiplying the whole function by negative 1. So that multiplies the numerator by negative 1. All right, let's look at the difference between these two. Here you're plugging in x plus h into the original function. Everywhere there's an x, you're plugging in x plus h. So this, this, this one becomes x plus h minus 2 over x plus h plus 1. There's not much you can do to that. This one, you have to literally find g of x and find g of h and then add them together. So that's what g of x plus g of h is. 
Now I'm leaving a lot of steps out of here. I'll let you, I'll let you uh, fill in the steps. Maybe hit the pause button and see if you can show that when you add these two together, you should get 3x minus 3h over x plus 1 over x plus 1 times h plus 1. By the way, what's the domain of this function? Let's go back up to the top. The domain of this function is the set of all x for which the equation is defined. In this case, it's defined, this is a rational expression, it's defined everywhere except where the denominator is 0. So x plus 1 cannot equal 0. So x cannot equal negative 1. Let's keep on going here. Uh, so on some of your homework, you have a function called, a, uh, like this, it's, this is an example of a piecewise function. Uh, the function, the y value will be this expression if x is less than 2, is this expression if x is greater than or equal to 2. So it, it depends on, 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 on what x is. And the first one, if x is greater than 2, which is 3, you plug it into this one, right? So it becomes 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. On the second one, f of 0, remember what this means? The value of y when x is 0. Since, it's less, since x is less than 2, you plug into this formula, so you get 3 f of 2 is right on the borderline, isn't it? So it, it would equal 2, so it would be 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. f of 3 halves would be, um, uh, let's see, what's, what, what do we have here? 3 halves is less than 2, so you'd plug into this one. 2 times 3 halves plus 3, I get 6 on that one. Let's keep on going. So anyway, we were talking about the domain, and again, the, the convention we're going to use is the domain, when you're given a function defined by an equation, it's all x values for which the equation is defined, unless stated otherwise. So, on these we want to find the, the, the domain. There's basically two ways, well we're going, to, we're going to learn more than that, but at this point on your homework tonight, there's two main ways that, that the domain is restricted. One of them is you, you can't have a negative inside of a square root, so saying it differently, what's inside the square root called the radicand must be greater than or equal to zero. So if, if you just set the radicand greater than or equal to 0 and solve for x, you get that x is less than or equal to 5 thirds. The other one is, we've already looked, looked at this, the other thing that messes up the domain is you can't have 0 on the bottom. The denominator cannot equal 0. So if you set the denominator equal to 0 and solve for x, you take the square root of both sides, don't forget the plus or minus, the domain would be everything except plus or minus 1, so x cannot equal plus or minus 1. Uh, these last two are kind of tricky. The domain of this function, again, what's inside the radical must be greater than or equal to, to zero. So um, how would you solve that? Well, one way to do it, since we know how to enter um, functions on our ti now, um, if you enter y1 equal to this expression x squared minus 4x and look at the graph, you, the question becomes when is this y value greater than or equal to zero? So when is the graph above the x-axis? You can tell the graph hits the x-axis at 0 and at 4 because when x is 4, y is 0, and when x is 0, y is 0. So where, when is the graph above the y-axis? It would be when x is less than 0, less than or equal to 0, or when x is greater than or equal to 4. So that's the, the domain. As long as x is in this range or this range, this will be greater than 0 or equal to 0, so this will be defined. Last one. This one is kind of interesting because it has both things going on at once. Uh, the bottom cannot equal zero, but also what's inside the radical must be greater than or equal to zero. If you put those two together, you get that x minus three must be greater than zero, which means x must be greater than three. All right, last thing I want to talk about. Uh, we'll talk a lot about this. Difference quotient. Basically, we'll, we'll, in section 2.2, we'll, um, we'll talk more about what, what it means geometrically, but for now, let's just talk about how to compute it. To compute this, you have to find f of x plus h and put it here, find f of x and put it here, and subtract f of x plus h minus f of x and divide by h. If you do it right, a lot of stuff should cancel on the top and the h should also cancel. So for this function, look, if this is f of x, if this is f of x, then this is f of x plus h right here. This is f of x. Make sure you put parentheses around f of x. When you multiply f of x plus h out carefully, x plus h squared becomes this. When you distribute the negative 2, you get this, so the numerator becomes this. The 5's cancel, the 2x squares cancel, and what you have left, you can factor an h out of this term and this term, cancel the h, and there is your answer, negative 4x minus 2h. All right, well, we'll do, we'll do some more of these in, in class. All right, we'll see you then. Bye-bye.